So, you heard about Wall Street bets, and now you want to ride the short bus with the cool kids, huh? Before you kick in the doors to this party, you gotta learn our language. As a proud member of the Society for the Correct Use of Memes, let's see if I can get you up to speed. Welcome future YOLOers to the third installment of The Dictionary of Degeneracy. The first term up is the thing that makes Wall Street bets so special. It's impeccable DD. But DD does not describe cup sizes or that designated driver thing we used to do before Uber. When it comes to stocks, DD stands for due diligence, the act of thoroughly analyzing a stock or company to place only the most profitable trades. A skilled practitioner of DD will look at a trade from multiple angles, including unbiased fundamental and technical analysis before deciding to enter a position. But performing effective DD is more challenging than it appears. For example, after extensive analysis of the ornamental gourds market in the summer of 2020, one legendary trader by the name of the Emperor of Jenks sought massive gains by going long the commodity ahead of an anticipated poor growing season in Mexico. This was a very specific trade. Unfortunately for the Emperor, the poor weather in Mexico created a perfect growing season in South America, leading to the best ornamental gourd yield in Argentina's history. When a container ship unloaded a bulging hull of four pound gourds three months ahead of schedule, supply shot up and our trader's impressive DD was blown wide open, causing a gourd smashing loss. Remember, even the best DD is barely better than a coin toss. Next up is a character that is near and dear to the heart of every Wall Street Bets trader, Visual Mod. VM graces the comment section of hot posts, and you never know if he's going to sing your praises or roast the ever-living shit out of you. Did you just lay down some impeccable DD? Get ready for VM to call you an idiot who deserves to lose every penny to his name. Did you borrow money from your home equity to trade options and quickly lose it all? It's a coin toss if Visual Mod will offer encouraging sympathies or teabag your wretched portfolio's desecrated corpse. But who is Visual Mod? Some new users speculate that he is is just a regular guy who likes dunking on the poor. But these Wall Street Bets noobs dishonor themselves with their inexpertise. Visual Mod is in fact a GPT bot, an earlier cousin of ChatGPT. As such, our beloved bot skims every single post and comment on our favorite sub, learning our mannerisms and becoming our collective consciousness. Visual Mod is us. It is the Turing test proctor we need. Be honored if he graces your post with his presence. Just don't try to counter dunk on him, or your comments will get downvoted into oblivion for trying to argue with a bot. If you wish to unleash the wrath of Visual Mod on other degens, consider joining Wall Street Bets Mod ZJZ's Patreon, thereby getting the power to summon Visual Mod at will. The next item is something you're likely to spend an awful lot of time at, the Wendy's Dumpster. More times than I can count, Wall Street Bets traders have destroyed their lives gambling on options. Sometimes we'll even see someone go from being a millionaire to being in debt in the span of three days. You might think rock bottom is working a minimum wage job as a fast food cashier with no prospect of advancement. But those with the right entrepreneurial mindset can get out of their dead end customer service job and recover their market losses. You just have to put in some extra work behind the dumpster. This activity should not be confused with dumpster diving, which is already adequately debased. In your second job behind the Wendy's dumpster, Anticipate using plenty of lube. The people you bought your puts from are already lined up with $5 bills in hand, which is more than you're worth. The next term is a common interest among people who trade horribly. Technical analysis. Technical analysis is supposed to be the art of assessing a stock's likely direction based on recent trading history. But in reality, TA is when you look at a stock chart to find exactly what you want to see. For example, a trader will look at a stock that's slowly going up and want to buy a call. But it seems dumb to buy calls when the stock has already gone up 30%. So he will look at the chart and draw a nice line connecting the highs and lows of the Haken Ashy candles tack on a few Bollinger Bands and reflect it off the MACD and Williams R, throw in some RSI and the next thing you know, you have your evidence that the stock is going up and can buy a call with a strong heart. But the problem is, technical analysis enthusiasts are seeing patterns that don't predict anything. TA can explain what happened in the past but has no predictive power on what will happen next. And I can prove that too. How many times do you skim a four paragraph technical analysis DD on Wall Street bets? Only for the conclusion to be something like, decision time soon, or next move will be telling. And my favorite, 
It could go up or down, possibly sideways until it goes up or down. Doing technical analysis makes people feel better about their trades, but it's all confirmation bias. It's astrology. Or worse, it's a guru vomiting up some lines and taking credit for every time his proprietary TA works out and hand-waving when it doesn't. In that case, there's probably a course involved. The upsell will even include AI trading signals. Next up is a term I hate, and fortunately, it's on life support. Hedgies. According to people that don't know how the stock market works, hedge funds, or hedgies, are your arch enemies. They traditionally serve wealthy clients or institutions, so they'll probably never service people like you. Although they manage funds in many ways, they have one practice that should really rub the retail trader the wrong way. Hedgies make huge bets against companies that they believe are failing, and if that company does go bankrupt, the hedgies get yachts, and the shareholders are left with zero dollars and a crushed ego. This wouldn't be so bad if hedgies just passively waited for the company to go under. Instead, sometimes, they'll try to speed that process along at the expense of the company's employees and shareholders by posting savage bearish DD. Coincidentally, on the stock that you just YOLO'd into. But according to people who are still living in 2021, these hedgies have an Achilles heel. Once they short a company into the dirt, they're incapable of closing for a gain. Instead, they're vulnerable to the short squeeze, in which stock prices rising forces them to buy back for a loss, leading to more price rise, and so on. By purchasing shares after a hedge fund-led bear attack, retail traders can get the last laugh after all. Besides, a stock can only go down 100% but it can go up to infinity and beyond. Now, since that entire line of reasoning I just repeated is a bunch of BS, most of the bag holders that believe in such mythology have thankfully buggered off to their own subreddit echo chambers and are bag holding 80% losses, and the term hedgies has largely scampered along with them, leading to a significant reduction in the term's use on Wall Street bets. We should be so lucky, but I expect the next phase of pump and dumps to bring scampish traders back to the mothership who believe they're sticking it to the hedgies, with their $300 purchase of bankrupt penny stock. Let's get filthy now. The next term up is your wife's boyfriend. We see this term a lot on Wall Street bets, but why? Are many traders getting cucked in the market while also getting cucked in the bedroom? Occasionally, this does happen. User Pike Eater 4 provided a great example of getting cucked when he caught his fiance cheating with a male stripper. Pike didn't have enough money to move out of his fiance's house, so he put his entire Robin Hood balance on Palantir calls to try to double up and afford escape, only to lose the whole thing. Rumor is, it took him several more months of living in such humiliating accommodations to save up enough money to bail out. But as sad as that situation is, it's typically not what we mean when referring to your wife's boyfriend. This term is actually a pivot from the I fucked your mom phase of Xbox Live circa 2006. So come over there and fuck everything moving over there. Yeah, except, your, except, except the males. Since long gone are the glory days of Halo 3 and instead we play FBs, a more age-appropriate taunt evolved since half our moms are divorced by now anyway. Every time you trade, there is someone or some market maker on the other side of that trade. So your loss is their gain. The joke is, since that so many Wall Street bets traders lose money, we're constantly giving money to some other guy. People against whom we used to play competitive online games in 2007 have grown up to sell us FDs, and now they bag our wives instead of our moms. Trader beware. Next term is a controversial one. Regarded. The internet is an increasingly sensitive place. Disrespectful language used to get you punched in the face. Because you talk shit, you get hit in 2008. Are you? Oh, f you! Whichever one of you is 90! F the f off! You can't do anything right. You're a disappointment to your family. But in 2023, if you talk shit, someone screenshots it and sends it to your employer so you can get reprimanded for failing to represent company values on social media. In light of this cultural change, a shrinking number of Wall Street Bets Redditors are willing to use the term retarded. Instead, they opt to use regarded, so as not to trip Reddit's filters or land them in hot water. If someone does raise an issue, all they'll see is that you recognize that someone was highly regarded for their aggressive trading strategy. Soon, regarded will become offensive too, and will probably move on to esteemed. The next phrase is one that I don't think we see often enough. Please fly again. 
On December 12, 2020, Virgin Galactic attempted a rocket-powered spaceflight from their operating base in New Mexico called Spaceport America. The investors of the world watched with excitement as a successful spaceflight could send the stock soaring. The spaceship was released, and the rocket motor lost connection with the flight computer. Nobody knew what that meant, because it's literally rocket science. But investors panicked. Amid the chaos, Redditor Spaceman tweeted the company, Please try again today or tomorrow. I have my life savings in options for Friday. No response from the company. The beggarous Twitter user besieged of the company once again, and a legend was born. Please fly again. For several months, this misspelled phrase was used to mock anyone who lost money when a company announcement crushed their position. But it was so overused that everyone gave up on it quickly. This meme is currently undervalued. Calls are the play, and I think it's time for a controlled comeback. Next up, we have our most important tenant, positions or ban. This isn't so much a meme as it is a challenge. An online forum in which people post their amazing gains and losses will no doubt devolve into a cesspool of deception without someone to adjudicate the trades. By implementing a policy of positions or ban, Wall Street Bets demands that anyone flexing gains or showcasing a loss specify the trades that made it happen. Failure to do so results in a ban. Only those who show their hand are welcome to flex. In a sub where time is of the essence, because our options expire in less than seven hours usually, we simply do not have time to entertain detractors. Nut up or shut up, positions or ban. The next phrase is one you want to hear people say to you one day. Congrats and fuck you. This joint congratulatory and explicative phrase isn't entirely sarcastic as one might expect. Congrats and fuck you is a common response to someone flexing extensive gains, as seen here in which Hyperbolemia posted his $48,000 gain in four days. The common Wall Street Bets trader is more likely to see their account go in the other direction, so this phrase is entirely based on envy. This next one can be painful, so viewer discretion is advised. Long rope. To long a stock means to invest in it by buying shares. The dollar sign and all capital letters of this saying mimics the way certain websites like Twitter recognize a stock ticker. For example, dollar sign NVDA would be like hashtagging Nvidia stock. When you see long rope written like this, the commenter is advising that the trader invest in rope. There is no ticker R-O-P-E. The commenter is using a double entrande to tell you to buy a length of rope for unspecified purposes. He's most likely mocking you for trading like shit and recommending a guaranteed way out. And rounding it out, we have a dark insult we like to sling at each other. You belong here. Almost every Wall Street Bets trader is either on the lower end of the intelligence distribution curve or is brand new to trading. Alone, these factors are already likely to lead to loss. But we often see such individuals getting ahead of themselves and thinking they know some radical trading opportunity that will get them on the cover of Forbes. Every single time without exception, their idea is highly regarded. On Wall Street Bets, therefore, they are right where they belong. Take hometown homeboy, for example. He wants to sell at the money puts and then get assigned shares on the first down tick, pocketing the premium for himself. As far as he can tell, this is literally free money. But his overconfidence is undeserved. He is apparently not familiar with the terms intrinsic and extrinsic value. However, pretty much no one on Wall Street Bets is. Hometown homeboy is right at home. Before you enter our hallowed halls, anticipate a vocab test. Granted, learning a new language can be difficult, but if you try your best, the worst anyone can do is call you a regard. Wall Street Bets welcomes you with open arms. Whether you like it or not, you belong here. 